Today on Upfront, the winner of the 6th Congressional District Republican primary, State Senator Glenn Grothman. Is he too conservative for a conservative district? I'll ask him next on Upfront. Then, a razor-thin margin of victory for the Democratic nominee in the 17th Senate District. Can Ernie Whitwer help Democrats retake the state Senate? Plus, slain journalist James Foley, in his own words, what the Marquette graduate said about the dangers of reporting from a war zone. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin, this is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. I'm Kent Wainscott in this week for Mike Goucher. And we begin with two close primary races in Wisconsin. The winners now confirmed in each race. County canvassing boards last week reported official results in the 6th Congressional District, covering the central part of the state. Republican State Senator Glenn Grothman won with a 219 vote margin over the second place finisher, State Senator Joe Lipham. Grothman moves on now to the November general election and a race against the Democratic nominee, Winnebago County Executive Mark Harris. We're joined now by the 6th District Republican nominee, Glenn Grothman. Thanks very much for your time today. Glad to be on Upfront. Let me uh, ask you, first of all, to sort of break down this primary race. Why was it so close? How were you able to win? Well, I think a lot of people considered me an underdog. First of all, we know that money is important in politics. And both of my opponents outspent me. Dewey Strobel outspent me considerably. So normally you say the guy who spent the less should come in further on down. Then my base in that district was Ozaki County, where I grew up. I've represented parts of Ozaki County for 19 years. And Dewey Strobel was going to take a lot of votes from me because he also grew up in Ozaki County and lives there currently. So a lot of people feel, felt I didn't have a chance. I think the thing that separated me is people are more concerned than usual. They're paying particularly close attention to the issues, and they see in a lot of ways America is in big trouble, trouble like we haven't seen before. You know, you look at recently, we've been borrowing in the most recent year 20% of our federal budget, and that scares them. You know, they really want to make sure is the person who's going to get there be willing to say no to spending. It's something of greater concern than in the past. My signature issue in this campaign was welfare, and the number of people who are taking advantage of the welfare system is rocketing up the last 15 years. You know, we've gone from 17 million people on food stamps to 49 million. People see this. They see their relatives on welfare that wouldn't have been on welfare before. They see people who they feel are abusing the system, and they see it destroying America's work ethic and destroying America's families. And I talked about that much more than my opponents, and I think more than any other issue, that's what caused me to elevate above the others despite spending less money. Much of the discussion during the campaigns leading up to this primary was about which of these Republican candidates was the most conservative. And this is a district that has elected time and again uh, Congressman Tom Petri, who, who many would consider a moderate Republican. Um, are you too conservative for this district? Oh, I don't think so. I mean, conservative can be defined in different ways. And I think usually when you think of conservative, you think, what do you think about the size of government? I was thinking about this. Uh, I think a lot of your listeners remember Bill Proxmire. And Bill Proxmire was actually a Democrat. And Bill Proxmire, every time he ran, ran on being the cheapest senator up there, a Democrat who was the cheapest senator. Bill Proxmire ran, it's hard to believe this could be done in, in the relatively recent past. He would get elected time and again without even spending any money. He'd say, I'm not going to do any campaign fundraising. You know who I am. He'd show up at the Packers games and Brewers games and shake hands, and he'd win being the tightest senator in the U.S. Senate. So that shows that I think somebody who says no to spending, like me, there's no problem for somebody like me getting elected in the sex congressional district. And on the welfare, when I talk about that around there, they have the same experiences everywhere else. They see more and more people on the system, people maybe shouldn't be on the system, and they're offended by that as well. You know, a lot of your critics say you've got a history of saying things that are controversial, being out in front on a lot of hot button issues, um, being quoted as saying things that perhaps your opponent in this uh, upcoming election may use against you uh, as, as campaign fodder. How do you see that playing out? Well, I think it certainly helped me so far. People realize that politicians aren't getting something done because they're always looking over their shoulder, wondering if they say something or introduce a bill in the next election, they're going to turn it into a 30-second slot saying that this person is against the poor, against the environment, or against whatever. And I think people are tired of politicians like that. They want somebody who's going to say what's on their mind, tell it like it is. And I got a lot of people voting for me saying, Glenn, 
I don't always agree with you, but I always know where you stand. You don't talk like a politician. So actually, I think that's going to help me in the 6th Congressional District. You talk about people um, being tired of politicians. Uh, Congress's approval rating is at an all-time low. W what's the problem there? What has to happen? Well, I think people have to do a better job of articulating their position. Okay, and I think if you articulate your position, you become more popular, and you begin to have things be done. I mean, we have to call people out. Who is responsible for the fact that we're borrowing 20% of our budget? Who is responsible for the fact that we have so many immigrants coming here illegally? Who is responsible for the uh, $30,000 penalty that, there, that there is out there for getting married because of the, of the welfare benefits? And I think if you address these issues directly, you personally will be popular, and hopefully you can force Congress to deal with these issues. Are those, are those going to be your signature issues during this campaign? Well, certainly welfare. I mean, it was my signature issue. And it's my issue not just because I'm using it to get elected. It's an issue that has to be addressed. I mean, right? If I tell people that right now there are single parents out there, and if they marry the, the father or mother of their children, they can lose $30,000 a year, that's something that has to be changed. Our country cannot go ahead with that, with that current system because more and more people are are seeing how generous the benefits are, they're adapting their lifestyle to get those benefits, and America cannot survive if we have that many more people in that position. Mark Harris, your opponent, uh, the Winnebago County Executive, what do you know about him and, and what will your approach be to him during this campaign? Well, obviously I intend to run a positive campaign. Uh, I think my message resonated when I ever got around the 6th Congressional District. I'm going to use the same message in the primary as in the, in the general generally. Uh, Mark Harris is um, hes a figure from Winnebago County. Obviously, he's had a lot of people vote for him up there in the past. I haven't seen a lot of him so far in this campaign, less than I would have guessed. Um, but I do look forward to, to seeing him in the next few weeks, and we'll see what he's made up of. You know, he's raised some criticisms of what's going on in the legislature, my voting record in the past, and we're going to have to hash out those criticisms. He's challenged you to a series of debates in each of the counties in the 6th District. W will you do that? Um, I'll do some debates. I'm looking forward to debates. Right now I'm getting out and meeting as many different people as I can. You know, this weekend I'll, I'll probably be in Portage, Wisconsin. I'm going to be in Manitowoc. I'm going to be in Oshkosh. So I'm going to be as accessible as I can. Hey, let me ask you about reaching out n not only to um, the majority of voters in the district, but to the majority of Republican voters in the district. This was a, this was a close uh, primary. Um, um, not just uh, among two candidates, but actually three who got large uh, percentages of the vote. Y you have to win over Republicans who didn't vote for you in this primary. Is that going to be a challenge for well, you? I don't think so, because when I got around the district, a lot of people had a hard time distinguishing between us, which to me was hard to believe. But a lot of people, particularly in Sheboygan County, said, geez, you know, because I represent a lot of Sheboygan County, uh, we like Joe, we like you, we have a hard time deciding. In Ozaki County, they said, we like you, we like Dewey, we have a hard time deciding. Uh, my internal polls showed that I was the second choice of the people who voted for Joe and the second choice of the people who voted for Dewey. So I don't expect there to be any hard feelings. I ran a very clean campaign. Uh, not a negative campaign at all, and I think as a result there's not going to be a lot of animosity. I'd be very surprised if, if any of the voters who voted for Joe or Dewey in the primary election had anything against me. Glenn Grothman, the Republican nominee in the 6th Congressional District, thanks very much for being with us today. And we'll be talking to the Democratic nominee in that 6th District, Winnebago County Executive Mark Harris, on Upfront September 14th. Next, the closest race from the primary, the Democrat who pulled out a seven-vote win in a district that is a must-win for Democrats who hope to retake the state Senate. I'll be talking with candidate Ernie Whitwer next. And remember, you can keep the conversation going throughout the week by liking and sharing up front on Facebook. Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by American Transmission Company.